Hey friends, welcome back to the Sinai to Zion study. This is now session seven. In the last session, we ended by discussing the fact that the Lord essentially proposed to Israel. He said, if you will say yes to what I'm offering you, if you will say yes, if you will obey me, if you will be careful to observe all of the commandments that I'm about to present to you, then among all the nations of the earth, you will be my special possession. You will be my prized possession among all the nations of the earth if you say yes. And Israel said, everything the Lord has said, we will do. So in similar fashion, after the form of a, of a man proposing to his potential bride-to-be, the Lord proposed to Israel, and Israel says yes. And so here now is Israel. They're at the base of Mount Sinai, and they're about to enter into what we will see is clearly framed in pattern and told to be essentially a marriage covenant at the base of Mount Sinai. Now, to be clear, I say marriage, it really, in more technical terms, is a betrothal covenant. Now, of course, in modern times, the way that things usually work, I mean, I understand that people often do things differently, but usually tradition in, in sort of the modern Christian, Judeo-Christian influenced world, a man starts dating or courting someone. Eventually, at a certain point, he proposes marriage. He offers her a ring. She either says yes or no. If she says yes, now they're engaged, and then they set a wedding date, and eventually they get married. Um, and I always joke, and I say um, engagements are evil <laughs> because you've, you've, you both said yes, you've committed, and yet you haven't consummated the marriage, and that's usually uh, the most difficult time in terms of, of temptation and this sort of thing. But now in ancient times, things were a little bit different because they practiced something called betrothal and marriage. And betrothal is much different than just being engaged, okay? Biblically speaking, and in ancient times, when someone was betrothed, they were, for all intents and purposes, they were legally obligated. They were legally already married, but they haven't yet consummated the marriage. They haven't moved in together and joined all of their possessions. So I'm not sure exactly why they did it this way. But again, biblically speaking, and, and just sort of in ancient biblical times, the customs were there was a very formal agreement when the bride and groom would come together and they would have what we would consider a wedding. They would actually have the formal ceremony. And again, it was a very legal ceremony with legal agreements and signatures and parents being involved and this type of thing. Um, it was, you know, it involved monies and possessions and agreements and all of these things. We're going to get into that more. So really, technically, the covenant at Mount Sinai was a betrothal ceremony. And the reason that's important to make the distinction is because if there is a betrothal, the understanding is that eventually it will be consummated. And this is so important, and we'll see this as we, as we get into it, which is, it, it points, you can see where it's going, it points to the marriage supper of the Lamb. This very prominent wedding in the Bible, which is at the end of the whole story, is the marriage supper, it's the marriage feast, it's when this betrothal that began at Mount Sinai is consummated, is at the marriage supper of the Lamb. And again, we're going to tease that out in much more detail. But in keeping with the form of a Jewish wedding, okay, at the base of Mount Sinai, the first thing that happens is what's called a mikvah. So in Hebrew, a mikvah is just a ritual immersion, very similar to a baptism today, where you dunk someone in water or they cleanse themselves in water. Um, we in the church, of course, we have baptism. Um, in Judaism, particularly ancient Judaism, there were many versions of baptism. It's not baptism, but many forms of ritual washing, purification. So in modern times, even right up until modern times, and this goes back to very ancient times, before a wedding, most often the woman, usually within four days of the wedding, will reserve a spot. Now, there are actually places all over the, the world. Um, they're either connected to synagogues or Jewish community centers and this sort of thing. In fact, I'll put up some pictures here just to give you a little visual. A woman will reserve a spot and go and and, and engage in the ritual mikvah purification process just before the wedding. 
And so they'll, you know, it's basically a bath and they'll cleanse themselves. And it's not just a matter of washing up three days before the wedding. It has a much deeper spirit, just like baptism. It has a deeper spiritual meaning. There's an outward process, which is literally washing oneself in water at, you know, a, again, a synagogue or a Jewish community center or this type of thing. Um, but it speaks of a deeper inward preparation for the wedding. Okay, so here they are. They're at the base of the mountain. And the Lord says this to Moses in Exodus 19, verse 10. The Lord also said to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow and let them wash their garments and let them be ready. So just before Israel enters into this covenant, because, I mean, the fireworks are about to begin, and we'll see that in some of the next sessions, but before they enter into the Lord coming down and showing up and appearing before the people and entering into this very dramatic covenant, there is the mikvah. There is the mikvah. And this is not accidental. This is not something I'm reading into this. This is something that you'll see understood within uh, Jewish understanding of this passage. This was the ritual purification before the betrothal, or we could say the marriage ceremony. Again, to be technically accurate, it was a betrothal covenant. The Lord says to the people, wash themselves, because in three days from now, I'm going to come down on the mountain. And that's where the covenant begins. So this is a little bit of a shorter session, but that's okay. In the next session, we're going to jump into um, the beginning of the actual covenant itself. So amen and amen. God bless. We'll see you next time. Maranatha. Hey folks, thanks for watching the Maranatha Global Bible Studies. We pray that these resources encourage you. It has been a value to us from the beginning of FAI to produce quality media to resource the global body and give it away for free. Free and free forever. Now that said, if you want to join us in reaching those who do not have the gospel, we invite you to jump in on our $5 a month giving campaign. Literally skip a coffee and you can change the face of the Middle East in the 1040 window. Head to FAIstudios.org where you can give safely and securely. Maranatha.